Okay, so the election of 1844 was one of the closest and the most momentous of the elections in the in United States history. Okay, why? Because, uh, well, the, the, the result of it is going to be the election of James K. Polk, who is radically in favor of expansion to the Pacific Ocean, westward expansion, who supports the expansion of slavery in the West, um, arguing that the West will absorb slaves. He also is arguing that this eventually will lead to the end of slavery, which is kind of ridiculous. But, um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, and, and, and the result of this is going to be a series of events, <laughs> among them the Mexican-American War, the collapse of the Whig Party, the rise of an anti-slavery party, the Republican Party, and then <clears throat> the election of 1860 and the secession of the southern states from the Union. So it's all like this is a big election because it's a turning point in terms of, um, <clears throat> you know, the United States supporting westward expansion, but also the really rising tension between this, this post-slavery and the anti-slavery uh, factions, the North and the South uh, in particular. All right, so let's we'll talk a little bit about it here. So Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul, John Tyler was the president. He basically collapses and implodes as a candidate because his one big issue, the annexation of Texas, is basically usurped by the Democrat Party. Okay, so how does that happen, right? Well, Calhoun, <clears throat> um, at the uh, de he's a Democrat at this point, right? He, even though he was serving a wig as Secretary of State, he... John C. Calhoun orchestrates within the Democrat National Convention the nomination of James K. Polk. This was a huge surprise. Nobody in the Democratic Party thought this guy was a serious candidate in the months before the convention. They were all assuming that Martin Van Buren, Jackson's old uh, vice president, would be put in that place. Well, Van Buren is not chosen to be the presidential candidate by the Democrat Party in 1844 because he opposed Texas annexation. Because he was from the North, and the Northern people didn't want the annexation of Texas because they thought it was just an excuse to expand slavery, which they weren't, you know, why do that? Okay, so Van Buren is out, and James K. Polk is in. And James K. Polk, Polk is a rabid expansionist, right? He wants to expand all the way to Pacific Territory, and he wants to push the British out of Oregon Territory, okay? As well as annex Texas. And that's kind of the big thing he's going to run on, Okay. And uh, like I said, he's saying that, look, basically he's trying to appeal to um, more like lower middle class white people. And, well, <laughs> only white people can vote anyway, right? But he's saying, <coughs> white men but he's say, uh, can vote anyway. But he's saying, look, <clears throat> if we do not, uh, he's saying, like, slavery is going to go into a decline. Like, once they exhaust the soil in Texas, they're going to have to emancipate the slaves because it's not going to be cost effective. And he's saying, uh, look, they're going to just come up into the North and take your jobs away. So we need to have the West open so that free black people can go into the West because you don't want them to come to the North. So that, so, so this, he's trying to like uh, <clears throat> basically play on the fears of some of the um, lower middle class or working class uh, white people in the North. Okay. And uh, he basically, you know, it, 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 to a certain extent works. Okay. Um, <clears throat> What you have is really a division between, um, <clears throat> say, those who are, um, you know, small farmers, artisans, people who own small manufacturing workshops like blacksmith shops or, you know, just small scale businesses supporting the Democrat candidate. And you, you have a lot of people in the north in that category supporting James K. Polk. OK, uh, on the other hand, and, and, and some of those small-scale people, the farmers, some of them are slaveholders and some of them don't have slaves. They're called yeomen. They don't own slaves. But in both cases, it's these kind of like middle-class, lower-middle-class people who see their interests align more with the Democrat Party and who want westward expansion because they see, look, the West gives opportunities to people who are not already prosperous. There's land that we can get out there. We can expand out there. And so that's generally another reason why they're supporting Polk. All right, now the Whigs, um, who do they put in because Tyler was out? They put Henry Clay in, the, the eloquent guy who had, who's been sort of like, who had been warning everybody about Jackson for a long time. And Clay is uh, someone who has increasingly become critical of slavery, calling it out as something very evil, but at the same time, he's not endorsing abolitionism. And um, he's like um, saying, you know, 
we had to kind of a, have a gradualist approach to the end of slavery. Not that the, gradualist arguments are never appealing. Like if something's evil, you don't tolerate it. Like okay, and 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 but so it, it doesn't really work to his advantage. Okay, but he but he's relying on that old coalition uh, because the you know the abolitionists are not going to vote for the Democrat. They, I mean, they can't do that. Uh, he, the southern, the really, really rich southern planters who support the infrastructure and the currency stabilization, a lot of them, some of them are still going to be voting for the, the Whig candidate. And also, of course, the bankers and the merchants, the rich people in the north and in the southern cities, um, they're supporting a lot of times the Whig candidate. And a lot of times it's more urban versus rural. But the way it works out, generally speaking, is that the northern states vote, go for Clay and the southern states go for Polk. And Though it's all it's close everywhere, and it comes down to a few key sort of swing states. All right, all right, but uh, you know ultimately Polk wins. Okay, and it's hugely decisive because he's going to pursue these expansionist policies right away. That's going to lead to war with Mexico. That's going to exacerbate the tensions between those who want to expand slavery and those who want to end it. Okay, um, and all of that's going to lead up to the Civil War ultimately. Um, <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Bye. Okay.